This is one that I have been working on for a while. This is a 50 caliber ammo can, zombie ammo can, because we're preparing for the zombie apocalypse. Limited edition, but this thing's been out for the last six years. These things are dirt cheap. They are high quality. I really like the MTM case guard boxes. But uh, what I'm doing with this, I'm gonna do a different take on a battery box. I am going to do everything on the inside. That was loud. Um, and so this is gonna be the, mat, the panel mount for everything. We're gonna use the Buddy Pole Power Mini 2, which is right here. It's actually pretty small. I mean, I have big hands, so you really can't use that as a judge, but it's pretty small, take my word for it. And then I've got a variety of cables and connectors and stuff I've been saving over the years for things. And there's a bunch of stuff in here that I'm actually not going to use. Like this is a, an older USB plug. I'm not gonna use this. I need USB-C now because ham radio is coming into the modern area. This is a power meter, but there's no on off switch. So I don't wanna use that because it'll drain my batteries while I'm not watching. What is this one? This one here is a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. Probably don't need that because this is not gonna be man portable, it's gonna be car portable, and the car's gonna already have cigarette lighter plugs in it. But this, this could be useful. The PowerWorks 2 power pole version, and they have a single power pole version of this, but it was the same price. Why, why bother PowerWorks? That doesn't make no sense. So we're gonna put that in for sure. And then I've got a bunch of cables and stuff here that I've accumulated over the years. So this is a set of alligator clips on one end, and a set of power poles on the other end. And this will allow me to charge this off of my car alternator or power my radio off of my car alternator, off of my car battery. Um, and then I've got one of these for QRP rigs. It's a cigarette lighter plug on one end and a power pole on the other. And hey, you know, one is, one is none, two is one, so I got two of them. And then I have this, which has got Spade connectors on one end for the battery and power pole connectors on the other end to plug into power pole type things, power pole extension cord, because you always need at least nine of those. I have the power cable for the BioNO charger because you'll see some life pose in here pretty soon, including a BioNO, so that's in there to charge that up. I have an adapter to go from BioNO plug to power pole or from power pole to BioNO plug or from whatever to whatever. This is also the same as the um, the MFJ 12 volt products. So that comes in handy. There's some more power pole connectors there. You can never have enough of them. I'll probably use all of those in this kit. And then this here was what I was talking about earlier. I've now combined the features of a couple of things. So this is a USB-C power distribution socket, a USB 3.0 quick charge socket, and an actual on-off switch for a voltmeter, all in one handy-dandy little unit. So that is uh, three things taking the place of one. I love it when things come together like that. And then this here is pretty slick. This is the MC4 connectors on one side and the power pole connector on the other side, so I can marry up to most solar panels that are out there. And then this is the actual on-off switch, and this has got the adapters to make it fit into this bezel, which is what all of these other things fit into nice and neat. And we'll come back to that in a second. We've got, and the, the purpose of this box was to be able to use a variety of different power sources. So I've got a uh, three amp hour bio NO battery that I've had. This came from Matt, AE4MQ, thank you, Matt. I have the the Thump made Raspberry Pi buck converter device where you put uh, 12 volts in from your regular ham radio power supply. You get 12 volts back out for a couple of accessories and you get five volts out to power a Raspberry Pi. So there's a video on this on the channel. I'll link that up there somewhere. And then there's one of these handy dandy little distributors and it is a Red D2 Connect, Ready to Connect by PowerWorks and you can put power into any one of these and get it out of any of the other of the three of them. So I'll use this as my power distribution inside the box and keep this whole thing modular. And modular is the key here, that's what I'm going for. This is just a, a, a USB battery bank for like recharging your cell phones. You can actually power a Raspberry Pi off of this so it lives in the battery box because where else do you put batteries? This is 
a 12 amp AGM sealed lead acid battery because we still exist in the 90s and this battery is still in good use. I've used this like four times. And then in the same amount of space is one of those Miati batteries. And this one is six amp hours. This one's five amp hours, but it's the five amp hour sealed lead acid lie. So it's really like two amp hours. And this is really like six amp hours. And then it's like right off the edge of the cliff and done because it's a life po. So that's why I got this great big battery box was to put all this stuff in it. And what I'm going to do that's different than what a lot of people do is I'm not going to penetrate the exterior shell of the case. I am going to put this panel on and then this panel is going to hold the power socket adapters and the buddy pole power mini so that I can have one, two, and then three, four, and then I'll have, so one, two, three, four power pole connectors, and then I will have the on-off switch, and then I will have the USB and the voltmeter and the USB-C charger. There's also a USB port here, and then I can plug in a solar panel here, and this is a solar charge controller, and I'm actually going to cheat, and I'm going to do some risky things. You guys will probably agree this isn't risky at all. I'm going to use the BioNO charger to plug into the solar section to charge the batteries that are in here, um, and... Now I've got my all-purpose battery box, and this thing will close up. If I put the power mini in the right spot, it will close up, latch up, and be watertight. So that's the plan. We'll see if we can make that happen. All right, you guys have seen people do power poles before. You've even seen me do power poles before. So I'm going to skip over all of the, the power pole crimping magic and refer you to a video that I'm going to put up here, there about how I do power poles. So that takes care of all that nonsense. Let's look at the wiring diagram that I've got here for you. What we've got is the battery source, and this can be, in the, in the case of this battery box, I wanted this to be very battery agile. So I've got a sealed lead acid, I've got a LifePo 4, I've got a smaller LifePo 4, I can take those three out and put a bigger LifePo 4 in, I've got a USB battery bank that can be charged with this. Battery agile was the key. So this is what we've got here. So power source goes into the master arm switch. And the way the master arm switch is wired is pretty interesting. There are two separate hot wires and then a common ground between the two. So this black wire here is actually connected to a single post behind the scenes here. And then this red wire, this red wire connects to one post. And then when you flip it on, it joins the red wire on the other side of the post, on the other post on the other side of the switch. That's what I meant to say. And then that sends power over to that little ready to connect thing from Anderson, from PowerWorks. They don't make that anymore, but I have a link for a four port distribution unit down below, or you can get an eight port or 120 port, or you can make your own, or you can use bus bars. The whole thing is modular, but this is the way that I did it. And I just wanted to share that with you. From there, I have this USB, uh, C and USB B quick charge power distribution power meter on off switch for the the lighted display here that is plugged in with power poles to the power pole connection and then I have this two power pole panel mount socket here which is then plugged into two different ports on the bottom side so that's power switch thank you dog power switch connects to one um, one power pole connects here second power pole connects here USB device connects here and there is no no fifth connection, there's only four. And I think the dog's barking at the mailman. Hang on one second. All right, it wasn't the mailman, it was the mail woman. And uh, interesting story, when we moved out here, we had our first rural mailbox. Before this, we've always had PO boxes. And we had two different males, mailmen, men, that delivered the mail. During the week, we had Dave who delivered the mail during the week. And then on Saturday, we had Dave who delivered the mail on Saturday. And these were two different Daves and we came to know and love them and call them by their nicknames of Week Dave and Saturday Dave. And Saturday Dave has gone on to greener pastures of retirement or whatever. Week Dave is still around, but every so often Week Dave gets a substitute in and the substitute was who showed up today. Anyway, that was the fun story I thought I'd share with you. So where we were when we left off was we've got all of these things here all connected and then this buddy pole power mini device, the way I'm going to connect this up and you'll see this as we get there, the battery section will plug into either one of these two power works power poles here on the on the panel mount which as you can see by the wiring diagram they connect down to the distribution block 
and the distribution block connects through the power switch to the battery. So as long as I have power input on the solar side, I will have battery charging on this side over here. And that gives me one, two, three power pole connections. So let me get this thing wired up and then we'll do a quick smoke test. Whew. All right, that all works. Let me share with you some of the components that I got in here. And depending on how you spec out your case and what parts you have on hand, this can be a variety of different prices, but there are links to all of this stuff and more down in the description below because I sourced some of my stuff before I started this project and had some of the stuff on hand. And so there's a bunch of stuff down there. But like I said, the distribution block, the ready to connect thing doesn't exist anymore as a product. And now they've made these PowerWorks PD4s. This thing will work just fine. Or you can roll your own out of just some raw connectors and marry them all up. We've done that in a previous video as well. The zombie ammo box, the panel mount with the on off switch and the cell phone charger is there. I also have a link to just the cell phone charger part down below in case you happen to already have this stuff and want to switch something out. The PowerWorks Panel Pole 2. Remember I said in the beginning that they have a Power Pole 1 version. It's the same price when I looked. So I would get the two because more power is better than not more power. And then I didn't get this um, power panel like i mentioned i already had this power panel i got this piece to fill it in and i got one of these on off switches and i got this thing so if you get this one then you won't need those other two parts and if you don't get this one then you will need the other two parts so that one's there and then that mc4 cable is pretty spectacular. i don't know i just made that word up and then the bio no power power charger this thing works phenomenally it's simple it's small it's lightweight it does the thing i I can't speak any higher of it. What I will do is I will plug this into a wall outlet and I will plug this into the solar port on the Power Mini 2, or I will use my benchtop power supply. My benchtop power supply that powers my ham radio gear does not put out the right amount of voltage to fully charge a LifePo 4 battery, but it will increase the charge and get you somewhere in the working area. That benchtop power supply my old astron 30 amp power supply will charge up the sealed lead acid battery that's in there or the cigarette lighter plug adapter will probably charge both of them um the lifepo and the sealed lead acid battery so again my battery box is battery agile so that's that's where we are with this and uh then there's a real simple Miati battery. This thing, I've heard no complaints about these batteries. I've only heard positive things. There's also bio NOs. And depending on how much space you have left in that box, that box is pretty big. I have seen up to a 12 amp hour bio NO that will fit inside the box. But I don't have room because I've already got six and five and three, and then that little USB power bank and then all the extra wires. So let me know if you make this thing Let's do some beauty shots now. All right, folks, here is the big reveal. So one of my design goals was to not penetrate the case at all, to keep it all waterproof. So nothing on that side, nothing on that side, nothing on that side, and lastly, nothing on that side. So that is the, the battery box itself from the outside. Doesn't look like much more than an ammo can. On the inside, we've got everything all wired up and plugged in. So we've got our master arm switch, which powers up the Anderson power pole device here. And it will also power up the power distribution USB-C and quick charge USB-B device, which when I push the on switch will also display the power reading from the battery itself. And then the buddy pole device is powered off of the battery pack right now, um, which provides me with an additional two USB power poles over here, USB. An additional two Anderson power poles over here, a USB port here, and a place for my solar panel to go in there. Everything else is neatly tucked away inside. And here is that fantastic wiring harness that I showed you guys over on the other side. So it's good to go. I've got a LifePo 4 battery here. I've got a sealed lead acid battery here. I've got a smaller LifePo here. I've got a wall wart charger, a whole bunch of adapter cables to do all kinds of adapter cable fun things. And then it just sits there. And then the cables have a little bit of a memory to them, but that goes away once you close the lid. There is a, another video right over here that I think that you will like. Thanks for being awesome.